It's one of the new video games sweeping the youth market. Played on an ordinary television screen with a special console, they are really just a domestic version of the games you find in amusement arcades. Much depends on the crucial Christmas season, but the UK market for video games could reach five or six hundred million pounds this year. At this party in Hamley's last Tuesday to launch Sega's Mark II version of Sonic the Hedgehog, there was plenty of celebratory hype. That, that's an incredible number. I think worldwide we may have got to five million pieces today. As Sega's Nick Alexander told the party goers, they pre-sold 750,000 copies to the shops with a retail value of 27 million pounds. The biggest album of recent years sold 2 million copies at around 10 quid a time. That's 20 million pounds. That's 30% than Sonic has taken on its first day. The explosion in video games like these has been quite extraordinary. Even though we're in one of the worst recessions this century and consumer spending's flattened its back, Sales of video games this year are expected to at least double. So it's going to be a bumper Christmas for Sega and for Nintendo, the two Japanese rivals who've cornered this market. The problem is video games are taking away sales from other parts of the leisure industry. Here at Nintendo in Japan, Sega's bigger rival and creator of Mario the Plumber, profits are set to reach $1.3 billion this year. It'll make Nintendo the third most profitable manufacturer on the Japanese stock market and a fierce competitor internationally. Toys have been first in the firing line. The impact the video game market has been having on other parts of the industry have been mainly in terms of the toy industry and also to a lesser but increasing extent on the music industry. Uh, recorded sales of music have remained reasonably flat if you look at leisure spend between 88 and 91. However, going into record shops you can see that increasing shelf space is taken up by video game software. These games first started appearing in Britain's largest music retailer during the summer. They're now in about 180 of their 300 stores. Relative to the music market, it's already half the size, so it's a big market. It's the sort of market that our customers are interested in, particularly these teenagers who are interested in exciting, innovative products. With the recession taking its toll and the teenage population falling, this competition from video games comes at a bad time for the record industry. Despite rapid growth in compact discs, music sales have been stagnating in money terms and falling in volume. Dear Roy, thanks for your note of November 19. Ed Bicknell, uh, manager of Dar Straits, the world's biggest selling rock band on compact disc, says the industry is getting a temporary boost from the switch to CDs, but it's not facing up to the fundamental problems. When I was growing up, uh, buying records by the Beatles, for instance, or Elvis, was a big event. I mean, you waited till that new Beatles record came out and you rushed off to the shop and you bought it and you took it to school and you played it to your mates and all the rest of it. With kids rushing out to spend their money on records by groups like the Beatles, it was boom times for the music industry. Buying and listening to music was quite simply one of the main things to do. But times have changed. Technology has transformed home entertainment. And many young kids now are growing up spending their time and their money on this kind of strange electronic world. Hey, you guess what we got? Sonic 2. Later. For the video games generation, it's each new bit of game software which is greeted with such intense interest. And the games are rapidly put through their paces to see how they shape up. Where the hell am I? What am I doing? Look at that. There's a around. Look, I'm around. Oh, no, fly. Look, I've got three oh, tails. Look, and look how I get all coins. Look. Nowadays, it's a stronger. Uh, youth culture than rock and roll is. I think that rock and roll has become very, very bland and faceless uh, music on the whole. And I think video games has captivated that, that sort of an audience looking for something. And it's captivated them with, uh, with the interactive side of it, with the whole sensory experience of, you know, colour, sound, gameplay, everything like that. We do have a problem in, in the music industry. And in a sense, I'm part of it, which is that the, the majority of people who are controlling it are probably now in their 40s or 50s. 
and maybe it's quite a simple it's just a simple straightforward thing that people don't understand the psyche if you like of a 12 13 14 year old 42 year old john preston who runs both rca and arista insists record companies are mostly staffed by young people and he denies the industry's lost out to video games I don't believe that it is right to say that we've missed out. Clearly there are opportunities that we ought to be sharing in, and that is something that we, should, we need to look to as an industry for the future. However, the fact of the matter is, is that really what's happened is that there have been changes in music, and the good record companies respond to those changes. Possibly bad record companies won't respond. But whether or not the music industry is still in touch with today's youth, are video games really going to last? Consultants Booz Allen and Hamilton reckon they are here to stay and that the UK market's still relatively immature. One in three households in the United States have video game consoles. In England at the moment, you've only got 11% penetration, so approximately one in 10 households have a video game. There's obviously great growth potential in the English market if you compare it to the, the States. Sega claims there's big potential among adults, and one of the fastest growing parts of its market now is 20 to 45 year olds. However, even Sega admits growth cannot continue at present rates. Our feeling is that for next year, the market will grow maybe another 50% on this year. We really see the, the, the whole industry converging and off the back of CD as being a medium that all these um, products uh, will, be, will be based on. And so um, we see ourselves moving into the, the mainstream of consumer entertainment. Uh, and uh, really our, our competitors will be record companies and video companies and consumer electronics companies. And who's going to win out? I think that's very, very hard to say. I mean, there are a lot of very big players there. Um, but it's going to be a very interesting battle. The video games companies bring technological skills uh, to their business, which the music business uh, doesn't necessarily have. But technological skills are more easily learned than the skills of creating stars. And that's the business that we've been in. And clearly, with the success of individual games, and individual uh, items. That's about building stars. That's our business. Already the divisions in the entertainment industry are becoming blurred. The Sonic launch wasn't just for a video game. There's a Sonic record and this video of the record of the game. And the battle's on to secure maximum commercial advantage in this converging marketplace. <laughs>